This is Fanny. Most of her three weeks of life have been spent in Queen Elizabeth Hospital with a lung infection. She came here from a health centre when only seven days old, pale and struggling to breathe. In the developed world, Fanny will be put onto a CPAP machine, which stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure, to help keep her lungs inflated. But these machines cost about $6,000 each, too much for most African hospitals. So the staff here have been looking for an alternative. There's a lot of need for any other type of technology because in our hospitals we're lacking a lot of facilities. Uh, as of now, most of the hospitals are just using simple oxygen, which is not enough to, to, to help uh, in very small babies with stiff lungs who needs a little bit of uh, uh, pressure to keep the lungs open so they can, so they can breathe. Fanny was lucky. At Queen Elizabeth, we are now evaluating a low-cost CPAP, which she was put onto. The machine was developed after the doctors here asked a visiting group of medical engineers from Rice University in Texas to see if they could come up with a more affordable CPAP delivery system. This is a CPAP machine that we've developed at Rice University. Uh, it costs approximately $160 as compared to $6,000 CPAP machines that are used in the developed world and the feature that has allowed this machine to be so inexpensive is the fact that the airflow is provided by two aquarium pumps which are very low cost and they're designed to run for years at a time and they're also easy to repair. The machine is also very simple to put together and to use. So the pressure that the patient receives into their lungs is provided by a height of water column, which is determined by the height of water in this bottle. And typically patients receive between five and eight centimeters of water pressure. The water is placed in this bottle holder here and tubing is connected from the CPAP machine to the bottle. The other tubing that goes to the patient is attached here where there's a picture of a baby. So it's impossible to get the two attachments mixed up. And then at the end of the tubing, the nasal prongs are attached here. And then this is placed on the patient and the prongs are inserted into the nose. And then the machine is plugged in in the back and switch on the machine. And then the flow is set with this flow meter here. If the patient needs additional oxygen, that can be connected here to this port. And then the oxygen is controlled with this meter here. And finally, it's very simple to know that the patient is receiving air. So when the prongs are in place, the water bubbles. The nasal prongs are attached to the baby using a tiny stretchy hat and then safety pins and elastic bands. These keep the prongs, which come in different sizes, in place. The first stage in the project was to train a small team how to do this. In five days training we, we learned how to assemble the, the, the machine, the CPAP machine. How to put the machine together, how to put the machine on the baby, so you find difficulties only when putting to the baby. That is rather difficult because the baby is sometimes moving and shaking about it. But when you have ma mastered it, it's just as, as easy as such. The machines are primarily intended to be used for newborn or premature babies. But they can also be used for older babies and young children with respiratory distress. At Queen Elizabeth Hospital, we have had four machines in continuous use over the last three months. We're doing the study to evaluate what difference they make to outcome and should have results by the end of the year. If successful, we hope to roll out the use of CPAP to other hospitals in Malawi and beyond.
if we can mass produce the machines, we should be able to further reduce the costs. Children can go on CPAP for as long as they need help in breathing. Fanny initially went on for three days, but then the chest infection recurred, so she had to go on again for a total of 11 days. Now she really is getting better. Fanny is now feeding well and will soon be able to start her life outside hospital. But too many babies still do not make it this far. We hope that CPAP can help to change this.